with it, y'all. It's EJOE Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So what we are about to get up into is a reaction on something in South Africa. Um, 2000, what's up with it? Everybody in South Africa, just Africa, what's up, you guys, man? I hope you guys are doing good, you know? Um... So in 2020, I started doing I started doing reactions to um, hip hop music and South Africa, really just around Africa at one point, um, Kenya, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, and all that. But um, I've I've done some um, some things on like little documentaries on some of the places you know, because I was real curious about it, like things about Cape Town. Um, um, I did a couple documentaries on, um, there's a town in South Africa. I forgot the name, what it was. It was like specifically a town, just like where white people lived at where I found that very interesting and all that, you know, and like watching a lot of documentaries and things I learned about South Africa and just Africa period. I really liked because it was just like showing me like a different a different part of the world you know and just something really different so as of right now you guys i don't even know what the hell i just titled this video that i'm reacting to right now i don't even know what the hell i titled it what i'm saying that right now is i could have made this shit such a fucking clickbait title all right and just like i said i don't know what the hell i'm naming this but i'm gonna tell you this video i'm reacting to this is the name of it white south african woman says her people always blame black people for their failures i really i'm <laughs> just reading that right there honestly you guys just reading that i'm like oh this is about to be some bullshit you know it's like whatever you know just some clickbait and shit but i'm just like Man, let me see what the hell she's talking about because i wasn't going to react to it at first but just curious about it you know so um see what she has to say um uh, my guess what she's gonna talk about is um the farmlands because i know that was something with um like with certain white people in south africa like how they talked about with how black people were was like messing up their farmlands so i figure that's what she's gonna talk about and all that but i don't know and this was an interesting ass title right here. So let's see what the hell she's talking about, man. What's up with you guys? I hope you guys are doing good. Like this video, subscribe to the channel too. Let's see what she's saying, all right? So we have a woman that's, you know, from South Africa. You know, she is a, a white lady. And, you know, one thing that she's going to discuss is, you know, how the white supremacists are the same everywhere they go. Everywhere they go, they're the same. Even in South Africa, they the same way. Now, I want you to hear exactly what she says, who they're blaming for all their problems. They're not blaming themselves, but let's go ahead and roll that. You know, you've got those white South Africans that think that they're doing South Africa a favor by staying here, even though they hate the fellow South Africans and also blame everything, the whole life misfortune on black people. But the truth is those that cannot leave yet don't have much skills, also don't have the money to leave, okay? It's not because they love South Africa. They'd skedaddle as quick as possible. But the racist ones that do have money and a bit of skills, they get to go overseas, okay? So they immigrate and everyone freaks out about our immigration. But let me give you just an example. <laughs> All right, let me pause this. So as soon as I seen right here that it was a TikTok video, this is gonna be some serious shit. When I say it's serious, cause whenever people do TikTok shit, it's either funny or they just open up to a lot of shit. So as soon as export of racism, let's see what the hell she's talking about right now. When I say there's some serious shit, basically I know it's a lot of times whenever people talk about different things on their TikTok with like important things, it seems like they just, just go at it right there. Anyways, let's go at it um, once again. That a white South African lady discusses the behaviors of white people who have exported, who have hmm, exported racism. Anyways, let's go back. Of the type of people that immigrate regarding race. 
So this was a tweet that started off a thread of comments from people across the world. <laughs> and it's about white South Africans that get to other countries. This is, for instance, West Auckland, New Zealand. And can't shut up or hide their racism when they get there. They think if they see a white person there that they can be as racist as what they are in South Africa. Here are a few responses to this person's thread. Only white South Africans could find a new country that none of us knew existed and piss off everybody there shortly after arriving. <laughs> I remember driving through the Free State near Bloemfontein and stopping in some small town bar for some food, got chatting to Afrikaans bloke behind a bar and asked him the population of the town. About 500 whites was the reply. Actually made me gasp. This guy's from the UK. I've never met a white South African who wasn't like this. <laughs> My partner is from South Africa, white, but not Afrikaans, which is apparently worth distinguishing. <laughs> and it's got to the point where he doesn't tell people he's South African because people assume things. Why are so many of them like that and without shame? <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> you should hear them over here in Oz in beachside beer gardens complaining about the servant problem. God, give me strength. <laughs> I worked as a white South African. First day of work, Nelson Mandela had died the day before in sharing converse, ensuing conversation. Me. It said about Nelson Mandela crying. Her, her, he was a terrorist. Really? I lived in Browns Bay, which is a South African stronghold. You will not believe the blatant racism in the local... That's weird. I've never heard anything like that. That just sounds... That's comedy. Local Facebook pages. And their comment section goes on and on. And the thing is that it's white people talking about South Africa's white people. It is crazy. You know, shout out to this, you know, lady here just exposing, you know, uh, uh, the racist that's out there in South Africa. But it's, it, it seems like even other white people don't like they behinds. And, and, and I remember a, a few years ago, I was talking about that why didn't all of them go back to their homeland in the Netherlands? And I remember a few years ago, I had got an email from a lady from the Netherlands. And she had said at the time that we don't want them here. We don't want nothing to do with them. They need to stay down there where they at. She viewed them as, as trash. And boy, they, she did not have nothing good to say about them down there Damn. in South Africa. They didn't want them back at all. Because I said the worst mistake that you know, Nelson Mandela made was to not broker a deal with the Netherlands to take them back. I'm like, look, they should have said, hey, we got free flights for you. So you can go on back to your homeland. You don't have to be here because it's- All right, you know, that sounds kind of funny. There's this one guy I'll never forget. He, um, he literally said Martin Luther King messed up America because he, um, he desegregated it. He said the world, um, the U.S. should have stayed segregated. Yes, he said that. I did not. I just literally walked away. Another reason it made me walk away from him is because he was lightweight racist. And I told him, I was like, how do you have a problem with somebody that's white? I was like, I was like, it's not like anybody's fault why if you're born black or what this person's born white or this person is born Mexican or Asian and all that. This motherfucker was all like, nah, I knew. I was like, you knew what? I knew I was going to be black. When? When you were just what? A little sperm? He's like, yes. That's when I walked away. Never talked to him again. I'm being dead serious. As long as a lot of, you know, you still have that remnant of apartheid that's with, with those people. That's why they have all this animosity. And they, trust me, they can't stand that black people um, is in the government. They can't stand black people's the police. They always complain, you know, in everything about the, the government, you know, well, why are you complaining so much? Oh, well, it, it was better during apartheid. I'm pretty sure it was for you, but not for my brothers and sisters. And South Africa is a beautiful country, man. Like I said, I, we, we went back in March. It was my first time taking my children and my wife to South Africa and they just all loved it. They loved it. We had a great time. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Mark and Dr. Latasha Blanton, Real South Africa. You know, they definitely helped us facilitate a lot of things while we was there with my family. 
And, and yeah, yeah, like I said, it's, I, 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 lo I love South Africa. I tell y'all that that's definitely one of my favorite African countries. And, you know, I, I definitely could move to South Africa. But I've always said that I, I would like a place in South Africa and Kenya. I would love somewhere in Nairobi and somewhere in Johannesburg. I, I just, I like, I, so far, I like those two countries. But South Africa, you know, definitely is one of my favorite. You know, Santon, well, sure, it's nice down there in Santon. So, um, yeah, and they, they, they don't like to see that. So some of them, them white supremacists that's over there. It, you know, why are you crying? Why are you acting like a victim? He, he sounds like Jason Whitlock. I don't know if some of you guys don't know who he is. He sounds like Jason Whitlock. And the way he's talking, and this sounds like Jason Whitlock. It really does. All right. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not black people's fault. It's your fault. Except he's the other way around. Like he talks way differently and all that. So, yeah. While you in the situation that you're in. So some of your other brethren left, right? Cause they can afford to leave. Cause they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. I guess you didn't. Maybe if you work hard and stop being lazy and stop using race for everything, maybe you could actually get somewhere in life. Like you think other black people in South Africa isn't struggling too? They get themselves up every morning early to go ride to work. I said, I was telling the story about how some of the brothers and sisters in Soweto, how they get up real early to go into Johannesburg to go to work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they have, they have to catch a couple of rides and you know, they ride in a, like, kind of like equivalent of a taxi, but it's like a little van thing they all riding. I mean, they doing what they gotta do. You don't hear them see them crying and, and complaining. Now, of course, people are talking about the load shedding and which, yeah, load shedding, eh, that wasn't cool. And for those of you in America don't know what the load shedding was. So basically load shedding is at certain times of the day, they had a the SCOM app. SCOM is like the light company. And they had an app and you download the app, you put in your location, they'll tell you when load shedding is going to happen. So let's say like they're going to load shed from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. That's the, um, the power outage, right? I just heard about that, um, like two months ago. That caught me off guard. Right? So at 11 a.m., boom, all the lights go out. And it's not going to come back on to 1230. And you're like, so that's inconvenient, especially if you're paying your bill, right? So in some places, there was load shedding more than others. So it pissed people off. And while I was there, it did have like a national day of protests do some of the load shedding and, and jobs and things like that. And, um, yeah, that, that's not cool. They, they, you know, I, I believe that, um, uh, since South Africa is part of BRICS, that maybe they should ask China and Russia and India and all different places to, to maybe help them with that situation. Since you're part of BRICS, why not? That's what I would do. I'll lean on those other countries and say, Hey man, what we got to do to get this thing fixed. But all in all, well, even those problems, I still love South Africa. It, it is, it's a beautiful country, peaceful, you know, with the people. You know, people try to complain on South Africa. Oh, they got crime in it. America got plenty crime. At least South Africa, you're talking about they crime. They don't have nobody airing out schools in South Africa. They don't have nobody going to the mall and, and airing out the place where people shopping. You don't see that happening in South Africa. So yeah, every nation on the earth got crime. I mean, so why, why do you think South Africans crime is worse than what they got going on here in America. But yeah, you know how they are, ladies and gentlemen, the white supremacists are always complaining, always, you know what I'm saying? And you know, to the people that's cool out there, you know, even some of the white South Africans, a couple of them I ran into, it was cool as ice. You know, I'm cool with anybody that's cool with me. I'm a firm believer that I have no hate for nobody because hey, hatred is, is cancer of the soul. But if you treat my people wrong, oh, I'm going to be against you. You better believe that. So I, I definitely got to get back to South Africa um, much sooner than later. I'll probably be back out there in a few more months. But, yeah. Man, y'all let me know how you guys feel about that. Um, to be honest, the, um, the guy who was talking, I thought he was going to be from um, South Africa. I didn't think it was going to be from somebody from America and all that. So... Let me know how you guys feel about that, all right? Um, I don't know. I I don't know. It, this was this was kind of what I... 
I don't know what the hell I thought this was gonna be about, honestly. Honestly, no. I thought it was gonna be more drama. Like, I thought whoever this lady was, I thought she was just gonna... Like, her thing was pretty short, honestly. So, I'm surprised about that. Man, you guys let me know how you guys feel about it. Thank you for coming. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I just wish this world was happy. I wish everybody was happy. I'll tell you that. Thank you.